Here's something that I found at one of my local thrift shops. This little device is called a shake light. The idea here is that you can charge this light by simply shaking it. And it will generate a charge and it will charge up a battery or something and, and it will light. Now I found this for all of one dollar at a local thrift shop and I was of course intrigued. I'd seen them advertised on television. Why can't you ever find a working flashlight when you need one? Introducing the everlasting Faraday flashlight. This will be the last flashlight you'll ever need. It works every time without batteries guaranteed. The secret is our exclusive charging technology, which uses Faraday's principle of electromagnetic induction. Just shake Faraday flashlight for a few seconds and you get bright light without batteries every time. Amazing. And I was curious to see if they actually worked. So of course I took it apart. But what I found was not at all what I was expecting. Now, in the case of this light, we can simply unscrew this end. There's a lens. And then if we shake out the contents, here's what we get. Now, I was quite surprised here. What I discovered here are two coin batteries, and they are three volts apiece. And there's no circuitry here at all except for a switch. When you press the button on the flashlight, it closes this contact and it directs the power from these batteries to this LED light. Now, back here, we have this tightly wound coil and we have this piece of metal sliding back and forth through it. Michael Faraday discovered that, that a moving magnetic field creates an electric field and a moving electric field creates a magnetic field. And this was uh, mathematically derived later by James Clerk Maxwell in his famous Maxwell equations. And here we go to a web page that just shows us Maxwell's equations. This is also sometimes called a Faraday light. Now, there are two very thin wires emanating from this coil. We'll get a close up on those. Here we have these two wires coming from this coil. And if you follow them along here, what you discover is they're hooked to nothing. They are literally soldered together. I'll just go ahead and pull that, pull the circuit board back out. And you can see there really isn't much going on here. Here are those two wires and they are both soldered to the same point right there. So basically they're shorted out. They don't go to anything. They don't go anywhere. They don't supply any voltage to anything. There's no storage device here. There's no rechargeable battery, there's no capacitor, there's nothing. There's just no circuitry here at all except this contact. So it appears that the light is being illuminated only by these two batteries. So you purchase this thing and you turn it on and it appears to work. And a single LED would probably run a pretty good long time even on these two little batteries, but eventually these batteries are going to fail. And this little charging device is not going to work. This is connected to nothing. So I was curious about this uh, piece of metal sliding back and forth. I managed to get the top of this thing off and I could take, I could slide it out. It just looks like white pot metal. Pot metal is just sort of a, a waste metal made of a, a combination of things. You know, it's probably a little bit aluminum, a little bit tin, maybe some copper, maybe some iron. The first question you might ask is, is this, is this even magnetic? There's no magnetism coming from this metal at all. Now, if I take a real magnet, and that sticks, okay? This is made of steel, this is a real magnet, and yes, it sticks. Now, if I bring this up to the magnet, now this will stick onto the magnet. So this indicates that there's probably some iron in here, but this object itself is not magnetic. So even, even if these wires were hooked up, this thing couldn't generate any electrical current. One of the things that I found really funny was there's a uh, rubber cushion here. There's one on this side also. There's a rubber cushion that this thing is supposed to hit as it bounces back and forth. The rubber cushion on this side isn't even connected. It, it, sort of, it just sort of falls right out here. I've gone ahead and put this thing back together again. So basically, from here forward, it's nothing but a regular flashlight with two little coin batteries. And it's not a very good flashlight either. Everything from here back is a complete fraud. 
you can shake this thing as hard as you want for as long as you want. You're not going to generate any electricity or charge at all. They call this a shake light. I would call it a fake light. What a marketing fraud. There are a lot of these shake light type devices on the market. I don't know if they're all fakes. I know this one is. I don't have the original box and I don't have a brand name on it. Uh, I thought I would search the internet to see if I could find something like it. And I came across this page. This flashlight looks an awful lot like this one. I'm pretty sure it's the same one located in China. Elangle International Industries. I assume that this is some sort of a contract manufacturer that other people can put their names on. So I suppose that this flashlight is sold under any number of different names. So if you have a shake light of some sort and you're wondering if it's a fake, well, the first thing to look for is, are there any batteries inside of it? If there is a circuit board, is there anything actually on the circuit board? In this lump of metal inside of it, if it just looks like cheap white pot metal and it isn't magnetic, well, then you've probably got a fake light. So I guess the idea is that you buy this thing and you think it's working, and then eventually the batteries will go bad. And you're just going to shake this thing, and it isn't going to work, and you're going to assume that it's broken, and you're just going to throw it away. When, in fact, it never worked in the first place. So if you're interested in, in buying a shake light, beware the fake light. They're out there waiting to take your money. If you are considering an emergency light for when the power goes out, I would strongly recommend getting a crank light rather than a shake light. These crank light devices have a built-in alternator and you turn the crank and it generates uh, power much more efficiently than that shaking mechanism. And you can see the light goes on there as I'm turning the crank. It has three LEDs in the front. It really puts out a lot of light. That really is, is far better than that miserable shake light. Also, it has an accessible rechargeable battery right there. It's a standard size battery. It's accessible. If this battery goes bad, you can simply pop it out and put in a new one. And you can also charge it through a USB port. And you can keep it fully charged all the time, so if the lights do go out, You've got a functioning light, which also has a built-in radio, AM, FM, and weather band radio. So, And this is a device which would be very useful in an emergency in which you have lost power.